Hello everyone. Welcome to ProMind classes. Hope you all are doing well. So basically, this is the series of NCRTs and we will cover almost all subjects from 6th to 12th standard. Definitely we will try to cover everything. So today we will start with the geography class 6th NCRT and the chapter is chapter number 1 the earth in solar system basically i won't end up reading the textbook in front of you but definitely i will cover all the important part from the chapters and i will give you the bullet points in the slide form so without wasting much time let's get started so basically we'll start with the phases of moon so there are two important phases of moon that is the full moon and the new moon night. So the full moon is seen only once in about a month time and it is also known as Purnima. And the new moon is a fortnight later. Fortnight means basically it is equals to 14 days that is 2 weeks. So a fortnight later when you cannot see moon at all, it is known as new moon night or Amavasya. So Purnima is basically full moon. You can see the moon in the full size and uh, Amavasya is basically no new moon night or you can say you cannot see moon on that day. So this is full moon and new moon. Then have you ever wondered that why can't we see the moon and all those bright tiny objects during daytime? Whatever we are able to see at night, that is the moon and the stars and the tiny objects which are shining in the sky, why are we not able to see that thing in the morning time? So the answer is very simple, because of the sun. Why? Because sun has a very bright light. And that brightness of sun does not allow us to see the other objects which we are able to see during the night time. Now we'll come to celestial bodies. So what are the celestial bodies? Look, celestial bodies are also known as heavenly bodies. And uh, they are the object in space that is very simple examples of celestial bodies you can say is the sun, the moon, planets and stars. So these are the very simple example of celestial bodies. And some celestial bodies are very big and hot. So look here we are not talking about all the celestial bodies. Here the point is about some celestial bodies. And they are made up of gases. They have their own heat and light which they emit in large amount and these celestial bodies are called stars. So these are the characteristics of stars as a celestial body. What are the characteristics? They are very big and hot and they are made up of gases and they have their own heat and light which they emit in a very large amount and these celestial bodies are all the characteristics of star and the sun is also star. Now we'll go to constellation. Various patterns formed by different group of stars. These are called constellations. Means the patterns which are formed by stars, by the different group of stars, they form the different pattern. And this is known as constellation. And what is the very basic constellation? It is very easily recognizable constellation that is Ursa Major or Big Bear. It is the most easily recognizable constellation and it is also known as Saptarishi because it is a group of seven stars. So it is also known as Saptarishi and uh, it is very easily recognizable. Now we come to polar star. Look, what happened during ancient time, 
we didn't have a digital clock and watch like we have today so it was not that easy to recognize uh, the time or uh, we didn't have compass like uh, to determine the direction so what happened basically in ancient time people used to determine the direction during night with the help of stars and the north star which was the indication of north direction it is also known as pole star and uh, it was always at the same place it never moved it remained in the same place and we can locate the position of pole stars with the help of saptarishi and now we come to the planet like we have seen one celestial object which was star that uh, star has their own light they had very big and hot and they emit their light in a very large amount and that was also a celestial body which was star but there are some celestial bodies that do not have their heat and light and uh, such bodies are known as planets so basically planet comes from the greek word planetia which means wanderers and they are not like stars they do not have their own light they do not emit their light obviously how can they if they doesn't have their own light so basically there are different types of celestial bodies so star is different from the planet and with the help of stars only they get light because stars have their own light and because of that they get light so we'll study about earth so earth is a planet on which we live and it gets all its heat and light from the sun as you know earth is a planet and planets don't have their own light and stars have their own light and sun is a star so earth gets its heat and light from sun which is our nearest star so if we look at the earth from the great distance what will happen it will look exactly the same how the moon looks and the moon which we see in the sky is a satellite and it is also the companion of our earth now let's see to the solar system the sun eight planets satellite and some other celestial bodies known as asteroids and meteoroids forms the solar system so this all things comes under solar system and we often call solar system as the solar family with the sun as the head of the family so you can see how much important the sun is now we'll study about the most important one the head of the family the sun so the sun is the center of solar system and it is huge and made up of extremely hot gases so which are the gases it is hydrogen and helium so basically sun is made up of hydrogen and helium and it provides the pulling force that binds the solar system so sun is definitely the head of the family and what is the role of head of the family to make the family to stay together and that is what the sun does the sun binds the solar system with pulling forces and also the sun is ultimate source of heat and light for the solar system and uh, you know why the heat is not felt so much because despite the nearest star it's still very far from us and so we cannot feel that much heat of the sun though we feel the heat but not at the extreme level you can say so basically what is the distance of sun from the earth it is 150 million kilometer away from the earth now we'll see the planet there are eight planets in our solar system and we'll see that in the order from the distance of the sun so first is mercury then venus then earth then mars jupiter saturn uranus 
and Neptune. So this all eight planets of solar system moves around the sun in the fixed path. And this path is known as orbits. And Mercury is the nearest to the sun. And it only takes 88 days to complete one round. Venus is considered as Earth's twin because it is same in size and shape. And it is very much familiar to the Earth. Now there is one interesting fact that till August 2006, Pluto was also considered as a planet. But in the meeting of International Astronomical Union, a decision was taken like Pluto was not a planet anymore and it may be called as a dwarf planet. Let's switch to the Earth. The Earth is the third nearest planet to the Sun in size and it is the fifth largest planet. It is uh, geoid in shape, it is described and geoid means earth-like shape. And uh, there are uh, favorable conditions that support the life system on the earth and that is why we can survive on earth. And what are they? The earth is neither too cold nor too hot because both the circumstances won't be easy for the survival. It has water and air, the most essential thing for humans to survive. And uh, air has a life supporting gases like oxygen. And because of all this reason, the earth is a unique planet in solar system. And from the outer space, the earth appears blue because it's two third surface is covered by water and it is also known as blue planet. So now we come to moon. Our earth has only one satellite and that is moon. And its diameter is one quarter that of the earth. But why it appears so big? Because it is nearer to our planet than the other celestial body. So what was the distance of sun? It was 150 million kilometer. And the distance of moon from earth is 3,84,400 kilometer away. So now you can compare the distance between the earth and the sun. And also the moon and the earth. So the moon moves around the earth in about 27 days. It takes 27 days to move. It takes exactly the same time to complete one spin as well. And this is the only result why we see the one side of the moon. And the moon does not have a favorable conditions of life. Though it has mountains, plains and depression on its surface. But it is yet not favorable conditions of life over there. And because of this moon surface, it casts a shadow. So you see there are a little bit of shadows in moon. Whenever you see the moon, you can see that. Now let's see asteroids. So what are asteroids? Apart from stars, planets and satellite, there are also numerous tiny bodies which also move around the sun and these bodies are known as asteroids. And they are basically found in between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. Now let's see meteoroids. The small pieces of rock which move around the sun are called meteoroids. And sometimes what happens, meteoroids come near the earth and tend to drop upon it. And during this process, due to friction, sometimes what happens, the air they get heated comes and burn. And it causes a flash of light. And sometimes meteor without completely burn can also fall on the earth and create a halo. Now we'll see Milky Way galaxy. So basically Milky Way galaxy, our solar system is the part of that Milky Way. And uh, in ancient time it was imagined that it is the river of light flowing in the sky and it was also known as Akash Ganga. So basically Milky Way is a large spiral system consisting of several hundred billions of stars. 
And in that several hundred billions, one star is sun as well. And galaxy is a huge system of uh, billions of stars and clouds of dust and gases. And there are millions of such galaxies that makes the universe. So I have tried here to almost include all the points and all the subtopics which was given in the chapter and uh, hope that you like the video and uh, please please do like our video subscribe our channel and uh, always stay tuned to ProMind. thank you have a nice day ahead